When I was asked to speak today, I looked at the original reading that was given on the rotor, and my thought, thought, first thought was, why do I want to talk to the church about idleness? Am I supposed to tell them that they're all idle and they need to get up off their backsides and start doing something? And I thought, no wonder Betty decided to go away. <laughs> she can get out of that and leave it to me. <laughs> Luckily, our reading was expanded to cover the whole of chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. So that gave me something else to talk about. And it did not mean that I had to tell you that we're just la you were just lazy. So our reading starts with a request for prayer from Paul. He asks for a number of things from the Thessalonians. Firstly, that they pray for him and his companions as they go about teaching the message and that they will spread that message rapidly and it may be honoured. And also to pray for themselves that they may be delivered from wicked and evil people because not everyone has faith. We're still in that world today, aren't we? We still need to be telling people about Jesus Christ. We live in a world where most people do not have faith. I don't know about your prayer life, but I have to admit mine is a bit sporadic at times. And it is not long before I either drift off into other thoughts or even into sleep. Do we spend enough time in prayer? I certainly don't think I do. But it is how we build up our relationship with God. One thing that came to me when I was thinking about this was thinking my back, back to my days when I was courting Valerie. She was at college in Ripon, so in term time I did not get to see her that much. But we kept in touch on the phone. A good old landline, if you remember those. I don't know how it went down with the other residents in the place where she was lodging, as sometimes we will be on the phone for a couple of hours. Not always saying much, but just appreciating each other at the other end of the phone. These calls, as I say, lasted a couple of hours, so I got into trouble with my parents and ended up having to pay the whole phone bill for the rest of the time that I was living at home just to try and get me to reduce the amount of time I was spending on the phone. We spent a lot of time on the phone building our relationship because we wanted to be together. And is that not what we should be doing with God? Building up our relationship, spending time with him in prayer, we don't always have to pray when we want something from God. After all, we are told in Romans 8, verse 26, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but if the Spirit intercedes with himself, intercedes, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, Yes, God's Holy Spirit will help us in our prayer. Our problem is not normally knowing what we want to pray for. We can come sometimes with lots of things that we want. Sometimes actually with things that we need. But we also need to let God lead our prayers. <coughs> I know it is difficult, 
and I often, as I say, end up falling asleep while doing this. But it is time, only in time, spending time with God in prayer that we learn what he wants us to know. And his Holy Spirit will pray for what we truly need and for God's kingdom to grow on this earth. In our reading last week, we heard Tim talk about the issues that were facing the Thessalonian Christians. And they also face us today. We can get discouraged if we look at what is going on in the world and even in the church. But it is our contact with God through prayer that will sustain us and help us to keep going even if we think the world is against us and everything is getting darker. Now I suppose I should address the issue of laziness that is in the second part of our reading. The Thessalonians had been given the message of salvation and some of them just thought God was going to be coming soon. So they did not bother to do anything. They just waited for God at what people provided. They were just being quite selfish, in fact. They got lazy. They expected others to provide what they needed. And Paul was not happy with this. He said they were not living in, in accordance with the teaching that they had received from him and his companions. He urged them to follow his example, saying that they were not to be idle. And when they were, they did not eat anybody else's food without paying for it. Paul says that they worked day and night so that they would not be a burden on those that, who they stayed with. Paul himself was a tent maker and carried on his trade throughout his entire ministry. He urges those who have taken this attitude of idleness to turn away from it and that those who ignored his instructions in the letter were not to be associated with. Not that they should be treated as enemies, but to warn them that they, sh as, sorry, but to warn them as you would a fellow believer. We seem to be in a society when all types of behaviour are put up with for the sake of not offending people and not saying what we think and what we believe to be true. Paul advocates that these people we disassociate with so that they feel ashamed and come back into the fold. On Wednesday, we looked at Jesus' attitude to those who opposed him when we were considering the parable of the sower. He ex Jesus accepted that there were many that would reject his message and gives it as a reason why he taught in parables. Look up Matthew chapter 13 and read the parable of the sower, the reason Jesus gave for teaching in parables and his explanation of the parable to the disciples. I suppose we are different to the Thessalonians. We know that the second coming did not occur in the first or second century, and we're now in the 21st century. But the same sometimes could be said about us being lazy we have come to, got to the attitude, well, don't know when it's coming, won't bother today, 
do something to Maya, do something to Maya. And to Maya, as we all know, never comes. I don't know whether you expect the second coming to occur this afternoon or tomorrow or is it sometime in the future? And do you put off what God wants you to do because of that? Do you leave it to someone else? Are you possibly getting lazy? As Christians, we have the great commission to undertake. That is, telling the message of the kingdom of God. What are we all doing about it? Are you on a rotor for helping run the services? For cleaning the church while Steve is away? About helping the staff? About helping staff the activities with the children? And the various activities that we're going to be doing over the summer? We don't all have to go onto the street preaching, but you can offer time to be a friend to someone who needs it. As Christians, we are called to be active in God's service, sharing his love for everyone, even if you don't always agree with them. Something that we have to live with in our church today. Paul finished his letter by just talking, by just saying that he, he writes a short section to the Thessalonians in his own hand. It was his way of saying, this is what I'm saying, because he used to dictate his letters to some of his companions who wrote them down. But so that people knew that these letters came from Paul himself. He used to write just a little bit. So it is Paul who is teaching us this. Let us pray. Lord, we th thank you that we can always come to you in prayer. Help us to spend some of that time listening to you and what you want us to do. Give us courage to step out for you and offer you our services and skills to glorify your name. Amen.